Recording in progress. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Signature West podcast. I'm your host, Sam West from Palm Springs, California. Uh, my guest today is no stranger to real estate, and he's definitely no stranger to Palm Springs real estate. Um, I had the merit to start my career back in 1992 with him, and the rest just keeps on evolving. Please help me welcome Alan Long. Hi, Alan. Hello, Sam. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for that introduction. Very nice. You're very welcome. So let's go back down memory lane. Um, when did you realize or you found out that you have love for real estate? Uh, it was by accident. I got my degree in chemical engineering and I was going to go and be a chemist. And then I came out to California, met these people who were opening a real estate office or had just opened a real estate office called Bob Crane and Associates on Sunset Boulevard. This is back in 1970 something or another. And they said, you can't be a chemist. You need to be a real estate salesman or at least a salesman. So move out to California. We'll teach you everything we know. Well, <laughs> I went back to Chicago, packed all my stuff up and moved to California and started as someone's assistant, as Todd Joy's assistant uh, at the Bob Crane office. And I worked there for about three years. I got my license in 1980. And then I went to June Scott and Associates in Beverly Hills. And I was at June Scott's for about five years. And I asked June if uh, she would make me her partner, take me on, sell me maybe 20% of the company, and then maybe a year later, another 10%, until it got to the point where she could hold on to maybe 20%. And this would just be an annuity for her that would go on and on and on and on. And so I said, you know, let, how about this idea? And she says to me, you know, you're a great salesman, but what in God's good name do you know about running a real estate office? And, you know, I was all of maybe 24 years old at that point. I'm thinking to myself, wow, I don't know anything about running a real estate office. I know how to sell real estate, but I didn't know. So I went home very deflated. And then the next morning I got up and said, you know what? I bet you June didn't know anything about running a real estate office when she started either Ouch. 30 years ago. So I said, June, look, it's, it's either you make me your partner. I really feel like I've got to go out and start my own thing. She said, essentially, don't let the door hit you in the butt as you're walking out. And, uh, the rest was kind of history. So then I started Dalton Brown and Long. It was myself and Lisa Coffin and Craig Brown. What year so was that? This was 1987, beginning of 1987. Okay. So uh, I don't mean what, 45 years ago, dear Lord. Dear so, Lord. so here we were, uh, Craig Brown, Lisa Coffin and Alan Long. And we were trying to come up with the name for the company. Well, we tried every different configuration of long brown coffin, coffin brown and long, uh, brown coffin long. No matter how we did it, putting the this word coffin, coffin in there, there and it, like, doesn't make, it doesn't add up. It was giving the wrong impression of right. what we wanted to do. So we said to Craig, Craig, what's your middle name? He said, Dalton. We said, okay, let's call it Dalton Brown and Long. And we said, Lisa, we're sorry, but there's no way we can work your, your last name of Coffin into the whole mix. So we became Dalton Brown and Long. That was 1987. Right. Then in 1990, Craig Brown decided he wanted to do an international travel agency. And did I, was I interested? I said, absolutely not. All I want to do is real estate. So he said, well, will you buy me out of the real estate company to give me the money to start my travel company? I said, sure. So I bought him out in 1990. And so then it was essentially myself and Lisa Coffin as, as the broker. Did you miss chemist by then? Or did chemist just kind of fade it out as far as college interest? It, it kind of faded out. You know, it was really, I, I wanted to study chemistry because I was always fascinated by it, but it, right. it did not come easy to me. It right. was a tremendous amount of memorization on my part where my peers that I was working with in the lab, they could conceptualize and see a lot of things like reactions in their heads and the bonding of different atoms and their valence shells and all that stuff. And I couldn't see it. I needed to memorize it. So I kind of realized I was a bit of a duck out of water there, but I was going to give it a gung-ho anyway. And I did get a job for DuPont in their petroleum division doing quality control. 
but I never showed up for work. So <laughs> I just packed up my little Alfa Romeo and drove out to Los Angeles. So when you guys wanted to open Dalton Brown Long, what was the intention? What was the, 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 the bigger vision? Well, I'll tell you, the one thing I didn't like in working in, in, in a boutique in Beverly Hills, it was very cutthroat. It was, there was no cooperation whatsoever. If you knew about a house, you were not going to tell anybody else about that for fear that you might get a buyer somewhere down the road. And if you told somebody about it, they'd sell it and then there'd be nothing for your buyer. So there's no sense of cooperation. And it kind of felt like, you know, we had a big sales board. And every time I'd go up there and write the sales on the sale board, it felt like I could feel the daggers from all the other real estate agents just being thrown into my back as I'm, as I'm writing my sale up there. And I thought, this is no way to work. So the one thing when we started Dalton Brown and Long is we wanted to create a company of collaboration and cooperation amongst ourselves and amongst the other real estate agents in the community. And so that's what we did. So we started out as four people, and then we ended up as 800 people and nine offices in 2004. And that's when Sotheby's came and insisted that we sell them the offices. And but hold on, hold on. Let's, let's back up, let's back up. You also expanded to Palm Springs. Oh yeah, uh, we opened Palm Springs in the 90s. I think it was 1998, I believe. Um, correct. It was 1998. And, you know, from the minute we opened the office, it just took off like gangbusters. Why because, did you come to Palm Springs? Uh, I had always had a house in Palm Springs. My parents had a house in the movie colony in the 70s and the 80s. And then I bought the Donna Reed house in Las Palmas in the 90s. And I was there for 20 years. Um, so I always, you know, every weekend, I mean, I would leave LA Friday mornings after I showed a house, drive to Palm Springs, and then I'd come back Sunday morning so that I could hold an open house in Los Angeles on Sunday afternoon, every weekend for 20 years. There was no years. traffic back then. Uh, of course there was, but you know, you just want to time it correctly, right. or I would do all my phone calling from the car as I'm driving back and forth. So it was not... Let's just say I really know that route very well. <laughs> so I, I remember I remember seeing this to somebody, I think it was 2001 or two, I forget when, and I said to the, to the agent, I forget whom, if Alan would ever sell, I don't know where I would go. That's how I really felt about it. And sure enough, in 2004, as you mentioned earlier, you did. Well, you know, it, uh, Again, I've been in real estate a long time. In 2004, I knew that we had just had an amazing run in real estate for the last 15 years. And I knew it couldn't last forever. And we were so big at that point that just a little 10% decrease in market volume would have put us in a terrible financial situation. And I just knew it couldn't, you couldn't depend on that forever. And so when Sotheby's came, it was about a year earlier than I would have ideally liked to have sold. But, you know, they came knocking with, with buckets of cash. And it was just, it was just too good to be. And then they also told me that I could stay on as president of Southern California for Sotheby's for the next three years to help with the transition with everybody and the direction of the company. So I thought, well, this is great. Right. You know, they're going to pay me. I can still stay with everybody and work for another three years. And they're going to pay me to do that too. Right. So that's what I did. And then I left. And then, how you know, they offices, kind of... How many offices did you have in Palm Springs? I forget. We had one in Palm Springs and one in Palm Desert. Palm Springs, we were there on North Palm Canyon. I think it was 1345 North Palm Canyon. Okay. And in Palm Desert, we were on uh, El Paseo. We were right there in El Paso. So we had two really nice offices and yeah, it was just great. It was great. The synergy between LA and, and Palm Springs is amazing. Right. I mean, it, it, it is like the Hamptons is to Manhattan. Exactly. You know, it's just, it's, it's where we go to recharge from Los Angeles. And so it's just, it's a wonderful market. And then Very much. Retired. Pardon? I retired three, three times. Three times. So I retired after I stopped working as president of Sotheby's. And then they had a couple glitches. So they called me back in. So I left retirement and I came back and worked at Sotheby's again for another two years. 
And then I retired again and I was moving to Park City to be kind of like a ski bum. You know, I had to do something with my day. So I get to Park City. Oh, no more than I'm there a year. I find this commercial space and I build this wonderful office which is attached to a silver mine, which is so cool because in the conference room, we have a plate glass window that looks right down into the silver mine. And I lit up the silver mine with lights. It's just super, super cool. So of course, then I had an office. Well, I had, a, I had opened a real estate office to fill the office. So I started a real estate company in Park City called Rising Star Realty. And it's called Rising Star because the ranch I live on in Malibu is called Rising Star. So we just kind of... So I had that office for five years and then uh, sold that to Windermere. So then I retired again. I think that was the third time I had retired. Then I got the call about Avenue 8 from my dear friend, Nick Siegel. And so I came out of retirement and now I'm doing Avenue 8. So let's, okay, so let's back up a little bit. So you got the call, was it like a year ago or so? A, let's see, uh, August, yeah. August. Um, I know Nick Siegel very well. So just to, to give the audience an idea, who is Nick Siegel? Well, Nick Siegel, I made Nick Siegel one of my partners at DBL. And then when we sold the Sotheby's, he stayed on for about a, a year. And then he started Partners Trust, uh, which became a very successful office in Los Angeles. He that? sold Partners Trust to Pacific Union. And then Pacific Union sold to Compass. Correct. So they kind of got rolled up in that in that whole that whole sale thing there. So that's Nick. So Nick called me, oh, you know, about nine months ago and said, hey, look, you know, I'm going to start a new real estate office. And there's no culture in real estate anymore. And we could develop a culture. We could once again start an office of collaboration and cooperation, which there is none right now in our real estate market. And that was really exciting to me. And also the fact that Avenue 8 is, we're a full service brokerage, but we're mobile. We're fully mobile. We're the first full service, fully mobile real estate office. And what I mean by that is you can, with your laptop or your smartphone, do everything a real estate agent needs to do from wherever you're at whether you're at a client's house, whether you're at your own house, whether you're at a Starbucks, whether you're at a conference room in a client's office, you can do everything you need to do from your computer. And I mean everything. And so we've developed these wonderful programs so the agent can easily do everything they need to do without having to come into the office. So we've jettisoned the brick and mortar because the brick and mortar for a real estate agent is a complete waste of time. And I've said this for years and years and years and years. Our product is not inside the office. Our product's outside the office. Real estate agents should be outside the office looking at homes, showing homes, and taking listings. This is what real estate agents do. To come into the office is a, is a complete waste of time for them. But we identified there are two good things that came from being in an office. One was the camaraderie you have with your other agents. And the other is the ability to network. What do you have? Here's what I have. Here's what I need. What do you need? All that type of networking. So we decided we can do those two things without having the brick and mortar. So as far as creating a camaraderie and friendship amongst the agents, we try to, on a monthly basis, maybe every six weeks, do a little mixer you know, where it's at four o'clock in the afternoon, we either go to some fabulous house or we do it at one of our uh, restaurants in one of our shared office spaces that we use. We get together and all the agents mingle and get to talk and, you know, about their dogs and what they're doing and all that kind of good stuff. And of course they talk about real estate, but then during our office meetings, we have a live office meeting every Monday at 1130. The office meeting is Zoomed and it's recorded. And during the office meeting, we, we talk about how to sell houses and how to list houses at the office meetings. That's what it is. It's about tips to do those things as effectively as possible. And then we have a time where we say, okay, what do you have new that's coming on the market? Uh, what are your needs? What are you looking for? And now, of course, the whole company is either there in the, in the library or wherever we're having the office meeting or they're on Zoom. 
So we've really got everybody's participation. And so we network on Mondays with each other. And then we create the camaraderie by having interesting social mixers with each other. So we've really taken the best that comes from an office and kept it and just jettisoned what's super expensive. So by not having the offices, we're able to compensate the agents on higher commission splits than other offices because we just don't have the overhead of the office. It's just, and there's no need to have the overhead of the office because it's a waste of time with the agents. Point being during COVID, every real estate agent I know during COVID sold more real estate than they ever did before and their offices were shuttered. I mean, chain, the lock, the lock turned off. You couldn't get into your office if you wanted to during COVID, but everybody sold more houses than they ever did before. So it shows you, A, not only do we not need the office, but B, when we get rid of the office, we're actually more productive because we learned how to now work from home or work from your computer or work from your smartphone. So COVID, COVID kind of brought home what I had been seeing for the last 20 years, every one of my offices, the one thing they all had in common is they were always empty. There's nobody in them because the agents need to be out looking at houses and showing houses and taking listings. So COVID really brought it home. And so anyway, when Nick called me and told me all this, it made so much sense. I was like, okay, I'm going to Iceland. I'll be back after Labor Day in September. The minute I come back, let's get started. So that's what we did. So since September, I have been working with Nick at Avenue 8, and it's just been a lot of fun. And we've been doing everything we said we we're going to do. So why leave retirement? Why come back? Why come back? For the money. Um, <laughs> that's what I always say when everybody asks me. <laughs> hey, is good. Good. Okay, so no, it, it really, it's not for the money. And I'll tell you, so I remember once when uh, we had a huge Christmas party because I loved throwing big Christmas parties for the office, which I'm sure you remember. At one of the office parties, we must have had a thousand people, 1100 people. We had taken two floors of that nightclub on the corner of Highland and Hollywood Boulevard. And my parents had come for, for that event. And I noticed through the evening, because I'm mingling and talking, that my parents were sitting in a booth and there'd be a different real estate agent talking to them. Just, I could see they were in deep conversation and that one would leave and another one could back. I, I, I didn't know what was going on. So the next day, my mother says to me, she says, you know, we've always been really proud of everything that you've done in real estate, uh, the real estate you've accumulated, the offices you've opened, et cetera, et cetera. They said, but nothing impressed us more than all these agents coming up and saying how much you helped their career, how inspiring and, and thoughtful you were in nurturing their careers and believing in them to the point where their success. She said, we've never been more proud of you than that moment. So she's right. Uh, that's why I came back because I like to do that. And I tell people, my parents are still alive. So I still want to make them proud of me. So come back to, to again, do what I do. I think the best, right. which is guide people through the process of residential real estate. So that's really why I came back to, because I wasn't, I wasn't fulfilling that part of myself in, in retirement. I mean, mother's so, right. I mean, your mother is right. Um, but now you want to come to Palm Springs again. Yes. Yes. Um, again, the synergy there is still there. So many of my agents in Los Angeles, uh, do biz, have business going to Palm Springs, have homes in Palm Springs, go to Palm Springs for the weekend. So it just seemed like the, the natural thing to do. Um, I have once again bought a house in Palm Springs. So I will, thank you. I will obviously be there uh, more now because it makes it so much easier when you just jump in your car and don't even need your toothbrush. Right. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the plans for Palm Springs. And we're really excited about being in Palm Springs because we have an office in San Francisco. We just opened an office in New York. And of course we have our main office in Los Angeles. So all three of those, especially San Francisco and Los Angeles are major feeder markets to Palm Springs. So like we did with DBL, we created a tremendous amount of synergy between the agents 
of Los Angeles and the agents in Palm Springs. And we'll do that again. You know, we'll, uh, we'll do that again. And we create incentives for our agents in Los Angeles to send referral business to our agents in Palm Springs. And so you have a that's very interesting it. definition of luxury real estate. Okay, so to me, luxury is an experience. When you go to a luxurious hotel, right. what's luxurious about it? The experience they give you from the minute you pull up until the minute you put your head down on the pillow, it's luxury. So luxury is an experience. It's not a price. It's not a square footage. It's not a location. It's not a form of architecture. It's an experience. So we try to provide a luxurious experience to everything we do, which means it could be a very simple little mid-century bungalow, or it could be a huge estate on the ocean with, with lots of acreage. Does it matter? We can apply luxury in either one of those two settings and everything in between. So that's how I tackle the definition of, of luxury when people ask me that question. Perfect. Now, yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot. Nobody's a, a psychic here, and I just want to make sure that people understand that. Where do you see the market going based on all the 30 plus years you've been doing this and the ups and downs of you know God knows what, and now we have a, a different world that we live in. Where right. do you see it going just based on what's been happening the last 24 months, 12 months? Well, there's a tremendous amount of liquidity in the market. What that means is everybody's sitting on a lot of cash. Cash is good because you because you want to use it in which to try to get purchase assets. And so real estate is a very strong asset. And so there's so much cash around that people are buying real estate. I guess it's going to slow when the amount of cash everybody has starts to dissipate. But with our government throwing trillions of dollars into the economy, billions of dollars into foreign aid, there's still a lot of money everywhere. And people want to park it in art, real estate, yachts, uh, jewelry, you know, I mean, so the, the, because what will happen is if we have inflation, which we are having, assets keep up with inflation where cash does not. So it's going to take that. You have to remember real estate runs on a very simple principle supply and demand. Our demand is high right now because of all the liquidity in the market and our supply is rather limited. So it's driving the price up. That will continue as the demand continues and our supply remains the same. The only way that changes is if the demand shrinks and the supply grows and that changes the market. So to answer your question, watch the supply and watch the demand and that'll be the, the barometer of when the market will start to move in the other direction. Got it. So I don't know if that really answers your question. No, it does. I mean, it's, you know, it's speculation everywhere from everybody has an opinion. Everybody knows everything about everything. And uh, the truth is, you know, we don't know, but it's good to get a healthy overlook at it that's neutral as opposed to like, it's now or never or buy everything you can. And it's just that whole hysteria thing. Uh, right. Rumor has it, you have an event to announce your um, coming to Palm Springs? Yes, okay. we are planning to have an event on April 6th at Spencer's, and we're going to invite the real estate, the Palm Springs real estate community to come to kind of hear what we're about um, and to introduce ourselves to the community. So, and to let them know that, that Avenue 8 has come to Palm Springs. I want to close with this. Uh, you were quoted <clears throat> recently, and you said this. Where'd it go? You said, it's not about taking control and approaching things with a style of domination and wanting to crush the competition. It's about relationships. It's about empathy. Correct. Correct. So, like I said, I, I feel right now that the culture is, is gone in, in real estate. 
that everybody is combative, uh, manipulative, and showing no empathy whatsoever. And to me, that's not what sales is about. To be really good at sales, you need to be collaborative and cooperative. I tell agents all the time, when you close a transaction and your client, be it the buyer or seller, is happy, you have had a successful transaction. If at the close of a transaction, the, the agent who was involved in the transaction with you, if they're happy, you're going to have a successful career. Okay, do you understand the difference there? Either a happy transaction or a happy career. You'll have a happy career if the agent you cooperated with is happy. And so it's all about relationships. It's just constantly, it's so much about relationships. And for some reason, and I think it's because of these TV shows where real estate agents have been shown to be combative, manipulative, mm -hmm. kind of bitchy, mm -hmm. um, that everybody starts to think, well, maybe this is the way we have to behave to be successful. Right. And it can't be further from the truth. Right. It can't be more wrong yeah. in sales than, mm -hmm. than anything. So that's where I think I, I, I came up with that, with that quote. I love it. I totally agree with what I know. Alan, thank you so much for doing this. It was a welcome. You're welcome, Sam. Um, You're welcome. The best of luck to every aid, to you, to everyone involved. And uh, Thanks. everybody watching, if you enjoyed this show, this episode, please subscribe. And if you have any questions about Avenue 8, please put them down and someone will get back to you. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, be kind. Till next time, take care.